Hello everyone. I'm Deborah from Deborah Dell's Craft Room. We're going to make a little change in the crafts that I do. I'm going to be making things from felt. I don't use wool felt, I just use craft felt. But of course you can use wool felt okay. if you like to. We're going to be making today hens out of felt and we're going to be stringing them up and making a, what we call a prosperity string of hens. It's a tradition from India. Their hens don't look like mine. I made mine up. That you hang the string of hens at your front door and you'll have prosperity in your home. So I'm going to show you one so you can see what it looks like. This particular string of hens is the color wheel. I, uh, I put the colors opposite on the color wheel, like a base color, and then the wing color is the opposite color. My daughter came up with the idea because she's an art teacher, and she thought it'd be nice to have a color wheel string of hens in her classroom. So I did it. Anyway, so I'm going to teach you how to do it. Um, I'll make a pattern at the end of this so that you can uh, text me and I'll email you the pattern. And uh, if you want to make them, then you can. To start out with, so, you get a four and a half inch square. I cut mine with a uh, rotary cutter on a cutting mat. And I use this, this uh, thing here. But you don't need that. You can do it with scissors and, you know, draw a line with a marker or whatever. Just make sure that the marker is on the outside when you cut. And then I fold it diagonally. And let's see if these scissors work any better than the last one. Okay. Then I cut the point right here and go around close to the edge. Round it out here. And there I have this shape. Then I touch it up a little bit because there's little jags and stuff. You don't want those. I cut them all off. The little places where the scissors stop or whatever. Okay. Now this this is not quite the same on each side, so I'm going to cut this a little bit more here. Okay. All right, there you go. There's one piece. Okay, now for this placket, I guess it's called a placket, I'm not sure what it's called. You, uh, you start at the center here here and you cut a I don't know double pointed teardrop I guess you'd call it see how I did that and then you do it again on the other side okay try to get both sides the same There you go. One of these and one of these. Next thing we do is we're going to cut a tail and a uh, and the wings for this. Now I usually don't use patterns, but I will make one for you when this is done. And I'm going to cut a long strip. Try to cut the wings together. Let's see what else do we need a tail. Okay. This is stiff felt. The uh, body is regular felt, and this is stiff felt. If you don't have stiff felt, you can order some on Amazon, I think, or you can get some, uh, if you happen to have fabric stiffener, you can use that.
to stiffen it and let it dry. And, uh, or you can do double layers and, t and stitch them together to two layers together so that it, you know, it's not so, it doesn't flick around. Okay, so to make the tail, I just do that first, one line that way, one line this way, and you don't have to worry about this because it'll be on the, there'll be a tail on the pattern. One, one time in here, you see how that is? in over here, then down, and down. Let me check this out. Okay, this is what the tail looks like. You can make it shorter if, you don't, if it's too big. That, uh, let me see how big that piece was. It was about an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters square when I started, or close to square. Okay, now you wanna, you wanna fold the chicken in half here, cause see it folds this way. And put the tail up next to it. You see, it makes sure it's not too big. And it's not too big, it's fine. And um, so that piece is done. I like it when the, the wings and the tail match, but if you want to mess, mix it all up, then you know, feel free to do that. Okay, now I am going to make a uh, wing, see this wing right here? Start big so that you don't, you know, waste your fabric, because if you make it too small, then you'll have to make another one. Okay, so I'm just going around like this, and I just cut this shape. It's like a teardrop with this thing off to the side a little, up. And of course, there'll be a pattern. Okay, now I'm putting them on each side of this, and as you can see, they're too big. So I'm gonna put them back together again. and cut them down a little bit. I cut that much off, and we'll try again, see how they look. Still a tiny bit too big. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make another cut. All right, I think these will be these will be good. Of course, if you want to make your chickens bigger and you adjust the pattern, there we go. Okay, so the tail. And the wings are done. I just set them aside here. Okay, now I'm going to make the beak. Oh, don't want those scissors. Now I'm going to make the beak. This is also stiff felt. And you can put two of them together if you have, you don't have uh, stiff felt. Sew them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a point, and then I'm going to cut another point. And then I'm going to cut another point here and another point here. Now I'm thinking that this is, of course, too big. I'm going to fold this over, stick it in there. And yes, it's too big. Okay. This one is this one is probably okay. So that is done. The beak is done. And now, and I am out of stiff felt because I made 84 chickens and I ran out of 
red felt. And this is going to be the comb. What you do is you just cut a cut like an oval. Hang on, I'll show it to you. You see how that looks? Now I'm going to make little scallop shapes into it. It does not have to be symmetrical. which this one is not. This is a thicker felt. It's very difficult to cut. I use a lot of scissor bite marks in it. I'm gonna get a different piece. Don't like that. Okay, let's see. Stiff red. Okay, we'll try again. This is a thinner red. I just cut a square, about the same size as the tail square, maybe a little smaller. And Make that, make an, an oval shape on one half. Okay. Now I'm going to cut a couple of little scallops into it. So much easier with stiff felt than it is doing it this way but I'm out. Okay, now I have some points here. I'm gonna cut those points down. And of course, the sharper your scissors are, the easier this will be. I wish they had these shapes on a cuddle bug die. That would make it fun. Okay. All right. Here, here's this. It's a little, this is going to be the front. And it'll look fine it's asymmetrical like that. But I'm going to cut a little bit off this, just off the front of it. Okay, there is the comb. Now I'm going to use another piece of this red and make that, you know, hangy thing that a chicken has. Okay, now like this. Right now, this doesn't matter what size it is if it's a little if it's a little long because you can trim it as you're putting it in toward the end. Okay. So here we go. These are our pieces. The body. Right here. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. The body. This little thing that you stick that is going to be making the chicken a little fatter. Wish I could remember what it's called. The two wings. The tail. The comb. The waddle. And the beak. Here are all the pieces now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew the the wings onto the chicken. It's way easier sewing them on in the beginning than okay the little curves go forward go up toward the center because this is going to be the chicken's back. Now what I usually do to make it so that they're they match move all this stuff out of the way, is I'm going to put this thing on it and set it down so that this is in the center. You can look at the, uh, the numbers and see that 
it's equidistant here. What you do, okay. you look and you you find a spot where you like. This one right here is good. I'm going to straighten it up just a little bit this way. And set it set this back down. Make sure that it's in the same spot it was. And if you can see the top of the curve is right on the two and a half inch mark on this particular one. And this one is a little bit too high, so I'm going to pick it up, pick this up, and slide it down just a little with my needle or whatever. Okay, and then set it back down and try to set this in the same spot it was. There, okay, now that is right. And then there's a, a mark here and a mark here on each side where this angle thing comes across. You want that, you want a, a, a mark to be the same on both sides there. This one is a little bit angled funny. Okay, and you set it back down. And of course, if you don't care about it being perfect, don't worry. Don't don't make it perfect. Okay. All right, there. Okay, I have these two on there, and I have some pins, and I'm going to pin them in place. Uh oh. one. The felt sticks to itself so it hopefully doesn't go off course when you do this part. I'm going to set that thing back on there. Where did it go? There it is. Set this back down and see if it's the same still. It looks all right. Okay, now, first thing we do, get some thread that matches the green, or close to matches the green. I'm just going to use another another green, I guess, because I don't have a light green. I'm going to thread it a certain way so you don't have to tie any knots. I have a long piece of thread and I'm putting the two cut ends together lick them or whatever whatever you do to straighten them out okay thread both of those ends through the needle There you go. Bring this other loop end down. Right now, you start to you start to uh, sew. Take the take the pin out and hold it with your thumb. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push up from the bottom in any spot. You can start anywhere, and then go over. We're going to do a whip stitch. Go over, but don't pull it all the way through yet. Now take your loop end. Put your needle through the loop and mine is caught. Here we go. Okay. And there you go. You have a you have a starting point right there with no knot. It's just you've done a little slip loop there. Okay, now you know, little eighth inch stitches. And go around the whole go around the whole wing. You're gonna see these stitches and these are kind of kind of big. Which glasses do I have on? I need oh I need my other glasses.
Okay, you see this one here? I used the gray on it. And you see the little whip stitches all around the whole thing? That's how it should look. Not the way I'm doing it right now. Okay, so I'm, I'm working on it. I'll work on it and then... And as you can see here, smaller stitches are better and the same color string is better as well. See, I'll show you how not to do it. And then you can do it either the way I'm showing you or the right way. On these corners here, now when I'm getting to the uh, point, I like to use the same hole for three stitches. Okay, one stitch right there. Then you bring the needle up right at the point of the wing. And then you go down in the same hole that you went down the last stitch. And then again over down on the other side you come up and go down in that same hole again you see that it looks like a little feather almost at the end so, and then you continue on my last stitch okay all right well that doesn't look too bad it would look better if it was the same color green now I'm going to make a little tiny knot one slip through like that I'll bury a little bit of it. Not that it matters, but because nobody's going to see inside of it anyway. But uh, there you go. Uh -oh. Juju. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the back. Smooth, no knots. You can't feel any knots. And that's what it looks like in the front. Okay, so now that the now that the little loop is gone. I'm, and I have thread left, enough thread left. I'm just going to tie a knot on the end of this. Just one tiny little thin knot. Like a, uh, so it makes it into a loop, sort of. Okay, now we're going to do this again on the other side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up from the back, it's anywhere, doesn't matter and then go right down in a stitch right down and then I'm going to catch that loop I just made with that knot and if you don't want to do this and you want to do it the other way with knots you go right ahead because it's probably easier your way okay now here we go See if I got this still straight. Somebody's outside blowing their leaves, driving me crazy. But you know, short trip. Okay, so here we go. Now, keep on going. I'm gonna just do the same thing. You can pick any color for your body and wings. You should have some contrast though with the. Uh, so people can see the wings on the chicken.
Okay, now I'm going to make that three-point thing again because I'm up near the point of the wing. Okay, I just made one. You see? And then I come up right at the very point of the wing. Go down in the same hole. I just went down in. There we go. Sometimes the stitch will fall off the point, but it's okay. Okay. And then one around the other side. And down. Okay, I'm going to continue going. Right, there's the end of the second wing. There's a couple of wonky stitches in there, but that's not a problem. Okay, make a knot and cut it off. Okay, there you go. That's the beginning. Looks a little crooked. You know that you know that's my mo. No, nope, guess it's not crooked. Okay, this curved part of the wing, of course, is where the face is going to be, and this is where the tail is going to be here. So now, I'm going to pin it for a second, so you can see what I'm going to do next. Okay, now I'm going to put this little thing in here and I don't know really where to start it so I'm going to put this piece on there like that <clears throat> I got a piece of thread that matches the body now I'm going to thread the needle again with the two cut ends together I'm going to start at the front. Okay. I'm going inside first to make the first part of the stitch so that you can't see that knot, even though it's hardly a knot. Now I'm going to put the needle through the loop. And there's no, there's no knot there. And then you stitch along. So to do a blanket stitch, you you go you go in here next to the last stitch you made, you know, like an eighth of an inch. You come through. You come through a loop. You loop it around, and then you come through the loop, and you make a little like each stitch is a knot. Go through the front, bring this piece around the back, and there you go. Come in the front, wrap, wrap the string around the back, and there you have it. You see there's a little line there. I hope this is not blurry. Okay, so here I am. I'm making all these blanket stitches, starting at the front chest of the chicken. And you'll see why to do that in a second. Okay, I'm going to have to make this a little shorter. I'm going to cut the end of it off. it was going too far up where the tail is. We don't want that. Oh, that's better. That's better. See, you need a little room here to here for the tail. Okay, on we go. Blanket stitch.
Okay, now we're at the end of that point there. Now we're going to go around the corner here and press that up against there. Maybe make one more stitch here at the very point. And bring it around. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to start the blanket stitch all along this part here, the other side. Okay, now we're coming to the end of the placket, but we're going to keep on going. We have to do some things first, though. Have to put pieces in. Okay, you see how that looks? When it's stuffed, it's going to be. Oops, I have to take this pin out now. When it's stuffed, it's going to, you know, it'll have a place to sit when you're, if, if you're not going to hang it. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we have to cut along the top in the front. Make sure it's in the front. And just cut a piece, cut along the top a little bit, like maybe an inch or something. Enough room to put this in. Now they see that cut isn't enough, so I have to make it a little, a little longer. Okay. Put this piece in. Tuck that comb down in there. Okay, now we put the beak in there, slide that in, okay, whatever length you want it, slide the beak in, and then get this thing here, which is, this piece is way too long, I'm going to trim it a little too, hang on. And you see, if you lay it on here like it's supposed to be, I like to cut a little, cut a little angle on it that's going to go up next to the beak. That's why it doesn't matter how long it is, because when you're putting this together, you'll adjust it. Stick that in there, like this. And there you have your chicken so far, but now it's time to sew. Now you can't do a blanket stitch here. You're going to have to do the uh, whip stitch. And I have to re-thread my needle because it fell out. This is quilting thread. You don't have to use quilting thread. I just used it because it was the same color as the chicken. Now, go right underneath that waddle thing right here. I'm going to get another needle to point it right here and secure a stitch right underneath that. You can do it with a knot and make a nice stitch to hold that from, you know, whatever. Now go down behind and come up on the other side and then go into the into that waddle thing to the other side and pull it through.
and then keep doing that. You'll have to look both ways. Okay, put it in. See? Coming through the other way. And just keep keep stitching. The reason I had you start at the front with this placket piece is you go this way and then you come back and you end up right here so you don't have to tie a knot off or anything and start again. Because if you ended back here, then you would have to get another piece of thread and do it that way. Okay, now, all right, now another one, move over and then move over here and just whip stitch that piece right in. Again, another one. And then through, through the waddle. Okay, now I'm going to show you what it looks like. See, of course, I have some loose threads because this is quilting thread and it's stiff. Okay, now, you see how that looks? Okay, all right, next thing we do is we do the same thing, keep on going, come in the back of the beak, come out the front, and stitch. Okay, now we've gone through the fabric, now we're going to go through the beak onto the other side. Okay, this is going to be the last stitch through the beak, but it doesn't mean you're going to go up to the to the uh, comb yet. You do come back through the back of this, but miss the beak this time, and go through the point. And you'll want to put one, like blanket stitch sort of stitch, right there at the top of the beak. It'll secure that from moving up and down or anything. Okay, now. going to make this a little smaller, a little shorter. I don't like how it looks. Sticking up too high. Okay, now. I'm going to tuck that back in there. Okay, that's better. Now, we continue the same way through the back to the front through the fabric part can you see that and then up into the comb and in the back a little bit over This is the last stitch here. I'm going to go behind the comb and catch the other side. Make a little knot like that. That'll secure it. Then push it into the chicken to hide, hide the string. And cut it off. 
Okay, so, so far we've put the placket in, well, sewn the wings on, and now the only thing left is stuffing it and the tail. Now I leave the back open so that um, that's where you stuff it from. Okay, so I am going to go get the uh, stuffing because I forgot it, and I'll be right back. Okay. I have some stuffing here. You don't need a lot. And don't put the take the tail out. Now stuff the uh, back end. It's just like stuffing a turkey for Thanksgiving. Except for this is a chicken. Okay. Okay. When you first stuff it. Make sure you get it up into the chicken's head so his head isn't flat. And then okay. just keep on stuffing the belly. I have the chicken stuffed. And now I'm going to, I have to re-thread this because I ran out of thread. Okay, now there are two ways to put it in because I, I have a chicken tail with, this is longer than this one. The bottom one is longer. Or you can turn it like this and which is the way I usually do it. And I have the top one longer than right, the bottom. There we go. Let's see, do I have that in right? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to, with the loop on the bottom, I'm going to put a secure stitch there. I'm pulling it through, catching the loop. It's like a slip knot. Okay. Now I'm gonna go through the back to the front and going to go all the way down, all the way to the end, whip stitching the tail in. Okay, the last stitch for the tail, and then I'm going to go through the little bit of felt that's at the top. See that? See that little spot there? And I'm going to make a knot. Slip it through the loop. Like this. That'll secure it. And then I'm going to stick this needle into the chicken. Pull it through. So that it can... Um, so I can bury the ends. All right, now I'm going to get a bigger needle. Okay, this is a really big needle, and I'm gonna use this to, I don't know, maybe I'm not, push the, push the stuffing around, put it over toward the tail. This is too big, actually, this needle, so. But anyway, I pulled, I pulled some of the stuffing back down toward the tail, and now this chicken is complete. Okay, so here's the chicken. It's kind of cute. And what you do with him after after you're finished sewing him is you string him up. Now here's one. I just got it out of the other room. You string it on. This one is just a single string for, of a chicken. And you put a bell on the bottom. And I put paper beads in between. I'm going to show you, I'm going to make another video tomorrow on how to make paper beads so that you can use them to string up your chickens. And I also put some glass beads in. And I made this ornament hook hanger out of wire. And uh, 
that's what it looks like. Now, see this tail right here scoops down like a, you see how it looks? It scoops down. This one sticks straight out. You kind of just do whatever you want. This particular one has a different kind of a crown. It's like a, it's like a squiggly line instead of a scallops. And uh, that's what they look like. You can pick any color you want. That's the charm of these. You can match them to your kitchen or match them to your front door or make it the same color as your car out in the driveway. There's no eyes, but if you want to, you can put a little, like a French knot eyes, but I like them without the eyes. In the ones in India, they're very plain. They don't even have wings on them. They're just the shape of the chicken, like a, like a little smile face kind of thing. And they string them up and hang them on their doors. Okay, anyway. well, here they are. I'll see you tomorrow for the paper beads, the paper bead class. And uh, also, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a face mask. I'm going to be making face masks for my neighbors. And um, I came up with a little idea to make them a little bit snugger on your face. And uh, they're pretty simple. I haven't done one yet, but <laughs> in my head, <laughs> in my head it's simple. So thank you very much for watching my video. And uh, subscribe to my channel, and you'll be notified anytime I, I post a, a, a new class. I think I'm also going to be teaching a prosperity string of fish. They do those too. So I made one of those for my granddaughter, and, and uh, it's kind of cute. So, all right, well, thank you. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye now.